I'm going to go on from last week. I'm just going to uh, just go over a couple of things. Uh, if you remember, I spoke about let God's word live big in you. And Colossians 3.16, it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Let the word spoken by Christ, in other words, the Messiah have its home in your heart and in your mind. I believe that uh, God wants to dwell in us richly. He wants to, uh, his word to produce fruit. He wants his word to uh, come forth so that we've got something to stand on. The, pro- and the Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path or he will make smooth your part. Uh, I also want to just read uh, in uh, Romans chapter 12, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed or changed by this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. How many people know that when you got born again, it was a whole new way of living? Whole, it was a whole different, different uh, set of rules, a whole different ball game. It was just so totally different. And though we lived according one way, according to the way of the flesh, now God comes into our life and He wants us to live according to the Spirit. And to get the Spirit of God to work in your lives, there's certain adjustments we've got to make, like things like we've got to learn to forgive, not to carry grudges, not to do this, not to do that. And so there we've got to be changed and we've got to have our minds renewed. And I believe that that's a a tremendous thing when God can get a hold of a person and start to change their mind. Amen. Start to renew their mind. So keeping what God is giving us. If you remember, I spoke about John 10. It says the thief does not come except to steal, to kill and to destroy. He wants to steal your faith. He wants to steal your purpose. He wants to uh, steal your destiny and your future. I'm going a little bit fast here because I'm going over some things and I want to get into something in a minute. Uh, Jesus said that I've come that you might have a life and that you might have it more abundantly. Galatians 3, 14 and 15 says that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. How many people know that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law? Uh, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ. Very, very important here that we understand that the blessing of Abraham can only come to the Gentiles that are in Christ Jesus. That are in Christ Jesus. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The old covenant and there's a new covenant. I'd like you just to have a quick look at Luke uh, with me, Uh, Luke chapter 13. There's just a couple of little things here. I spoke about this last week, but I just want to go a little bit further. Uh, Luke chapter 13 and uh, verse 16. And, and this, this is a scripture that I want to, uh, you know, verse 15. And the Lord answered him and said, Hypocrites, does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or donkey? That it, uh, from the stall and lead it away to water, to water it. So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think, and then it just says, think of it. This Satan, this, this, is, this woman is a daughter of Abraham. Ought not she be loosed from the bond on the Sabbath? You know, here is the devil has has loose has bound this woman, and God is speaking about something. She is a daughter of Abraham, and that gave her certain rights. Being a daughter of Abraham, ought not she be loosed? And if you have a look at Luke chapter nineteen, I'm sorry I'm going through this a little bit fast, but uh, I know that you'll keep up with me. And verse nine, and Jesus said to him, today. Salvation has come to this house. This is where uh, Zacchaeus, uh, where God came to Zacchaeus and people were sort of making accusations and, and so forth. But Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that 
which was lost. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I'm just going back to where it says that the enemy comes to rob, to kill, and to destroy, but Jesus has come to save, to set the captives free. There's a woman who's been bound all these years and through ignorance did not realize that there was something that was available to her that, that was meant healing and deliverance that she could be totally set free. And Jesus came in on the scene and he spoke to the synagogue who had lost their whole purpose, their whole meaning of, of, of really the, the Abrahamic covenant and everything about what it represented. And here are people that are suffering unnecessary, people that are going through things that you don't have to go through. I want to tell you, church, we go through things that we do not have to go through. We go through stuff that we, it is not necessary because the price has already been paid. If somebody gave you a voucher for $50 to go to BCF and you go in there with your voucher and you go and select some items and then you put your voucher down and then you take out your wallet and you take your credit card and you pay for it again. You know what I mean? You would say that is stupid. Well, that's how silly it is sometimes when we're paying for things, suffering and doing things that Jesus Christ has already set us free from. And so then he comes to this man and then he spoke and then he says, salvation has come to this house because this person also is the son of Abraham. Friends, we are children of the Most High God and we are his uh, his workmanship, and he wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you and I could even imagine or think. He wants to s uh, deliver us. He wants to set us free. He wants to make us the head and not the tail. He wants us to be winners, not losers. He wants us to overcome and not be overcome. Is that okay? And this is where it's at. And so I just want to go on from there today and just share some things. And one of the things there that I want to speak about is that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles that are in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. To understand this sort of stuff, we must have an understanding of the covenant that God cut with humanity. We've got to understand what God did. Because of the covenant, God was and is under obligation to protect you and me. I, I, I don't want to say this flippantly. I don't want to say this like as if, hey, God, you know. No, it's through honor and respect. It's through understanding that a heavenly father, a creator of the world, got involved with humanity. It was his idea to create man. You, got, you are not a mistake in zippers. You are not something, an accident that happened somewhere. You are God's prized possession and He loves you and He wants to bless you and He wants to pour His love upon you and He wants to lift you up and He wants to exalt you. He wants to carry you. He wants to do more than you could ever imagine or think in your life and through your life. He wants to be your dad. He wants to be your friend. He wants to be your brother. He wants to be everything that, that a God or a dad could ever be. He wants to be a blessing. You know what I found in the church? That many people do not believe that they deserve to be blessed. They think because of sin or things that they've done that are wrong or because of this or because of that, they do not deserve to be blessed. I want to tell you, friends, God wants to bless you. He wants to abundantly bless you. Amen. It's got nothing to do with my past. My past is gone. I'm a, a now person, amen? I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Jesus has set me free. You see, because of the covenant, and I'm going to say this again, and I'm going to say it again and again and again, God has and is under obligation to protect us and to bless us. Only sin and unbelief will ever stop God's blessing from coming to your life. The Bible says, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. I want to tell you like never before, there's a bunch of people on this planet that are beginning to call out to God like we've never called before. 
In our prayer meetings on a Tuesday night, there's a bunch of people there that are crying out to God, crying out to God for, the, for not for ourselves, but for a move of the Spirit that's going to touch people, that's going to bring salvation. Amen. I, I've got to stand in what God's already done for me. And I want to tell you that there's a fresh revelation coming to my heart, what God has done. And I'm starting to deliver uh, and speak differently to circumstances and situations that get around my life. Because now I know that I stand in a place of authority. Now I know I stand in a different position that I can speak to the mountains and they will be removed. I can speak to a circumstance and it has to listen. Amen. Call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. My responsibility is to get myself under the spout where the glory comes out. My responsibility is to make sure that I'm not willingly going out and sinning. My responsibility is to live the life that Christ has has asked me to live, to live a righteous life, to live a holy life, to to do things that that are good. I don't have to become a monk to live a holy life. I don't have to separate myself in some island or, or go somewhere uh, you know, obscure. I can do that right now, right where I live. There's, a, there's going to come a church that's going to rise up out of the ashes of humanity. There's a church that's going to rise up and there's going to be power. There's going to be authority. There's going to be victory. There's going to be a, a, a sound that, that I believe that this world has never heard before. I believe that there's going to come a sound that's going to come out of our music, out of our worship, out of our praise. That's going to take the roof off this place. Amen. There's got to come a something that's going to happen and it's not, uh, can, cannot be orchestrated by man. It's something of the Spirit that God is about to do, I believe. I believe that he's going to out, there's going to be an, out, I don't know, an outpouring of something so dynamic. It's called the Spirit of God. Something so powerful that it's going to happen. And it's, and it's all it's in God's time, just like the day of Pentecost was in God's time. When God heard uh, Israel call unto him or cry unto him, he sent Moses to deliver the children uh, uh, out of, uh, because these children were crying out, were covenant children. Friend, I want to tell you today, I'm a covenant child. Amen? We are covenant children. We are covenant. When, when God heard their cries, he, he, he sent Moses to deliver, to deliver them. I'd like you to have a quick look with me in, in Exodus chapter 2. Exodus chapter 2. Father, give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying today. Give us, a, give us an ear to hear what you're saying. It says here, so God heard the groanings. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. God heard their groanings. He heard their, their prayer. He heard, their, he heard their, their cry. They're crying out. They're crying out, God, God, deliver us. God. And God remembered his covenant. Everybody say covenant. God remembered his covenant that he'd made with, with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. What an amazing thing. It's an interesting thing that, that Moses was delivered many, many years before. It could have been 80 years. I don't know how old uh, Moses was when, when God actually called him, uh, when he was at the backside of the desert, when, the, when that burning bush came. But it was many, many years before that God actually delivered Moses uh, in, uh, as they put him in that little wicker basket, as, the, as Pharaoh's daughter took him out and as he was protected because all the men child, all the, all the children were being uh, slaughtered at that particular time. But God delivered uh, him right back there because it was in his mind. I want to tell you, friends, the day that is laying ahead of us is already in the mind of God. What God's about to do on planet Earth, it's not going to say, oh, I wonder, oh, I wonder, wonder." no, it's already in his mind, amen. He's already building the crescendo. It's him that's pouring out his spirit. It's him that's starting to draw us. It's him that's starting to put something on the inside of us, a passion for prayer, a passion for the word, a passion for the anointing, a passion to worship, a passion not just to say, oh, let's get out of here because it's lunchtime. No, we want to, we want to hang in. We want to linger. We want to hang around God, amen. Because it's a good place to be. <laughs> oh, shakabundi, say hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Ramate. You see, as long as Israel kept the covenant, there were no sick people among the Israelites. As long as they kept the covenant, 
He said, I am Jehovah that healeth you. And that settles that. Amen. He said, I am Jehovah. I thank God that my Savior said, by my stripes you are healed. And if we keep the covenant with God and if we keep our lives right, I want to tell you there's no sickness and there's no disease that can touch us. Amen? That's what I believe. I believe. It's been when we slip away, when we drift away, when we, when we get caught away by doctrines and philosophies and traditions and, and different things like that that we find ourselves out here flapping like a duck on a lake, yelling and screaming and spitting and shouting. It won't do anything good until you come back in, come back in under the covenant, come back in and, and, and deal with sin in your life. The Bible says it's the goodness of God that brings us to the place of repentance. Repentance is an amazing thing. Repentance is the thing that will break the curse of sin on your life. Repentance is what will, will cause you to, to, to put your flesh down because most people don't want to allow or let anybody else know that you've got something wrong in your life. Repentance, you have to deal with your flesh to stand up for God. Amen? I'm glad that God's dealing with our flesh. Amen? The flesh has got to die. Stinking flesh. Stinking flesh. As long as Israel kept the, that, uh, they, there was no sick among them. There were, there were none barren. No young ever died. No soldier died in battle. No army ever, what, even when they joined with other kings, could overthrow this small nation called Israel. <laughs> Amazing thing, isn't it? They were a blood covenant people. Only when they broke the covenant they died or were led into captivity. Moses led them out of Egypt into a desert and on the grounds of the covenant, God supplied all of their needs. That's amazing. He supplied water in a desert, water for them and for their cattle. He supplied manna. I was thinking, while I was reading that, I was thinking, wonder what the cattle ate. Just a thought. <laughs> Wonder if they ate manna too. Would have had sweet milk. Water for themselves and for their cattle, manna. They came out of Egypt healthy and wealthy through signs and wonders that staggered the world that was around them and still staggers the world ever since. The dynamic power that God delivered them. They, you know, when they came up against a nation, the kings would send messengers out and they'd say, we've heard what you did back in Egypt. We heard these things. When they sinned and broke the covenant, they were carried away into captivity and into Babylon. Also, there was a time there in Judges chapter 6, verse 1, and the children of God did evil in the sight of God and the Lord... Uh, let me just, and the children of God did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Midian seven years. When they sinned against the covenant, they brought judgment upon themselves. Everybody say that. They brought judgment upon themselves. You know that we're living in a day to, today when a lot of people aren't aware of what God really has for us, and we're living in a time in the church. When, when the church seems to be doing everything it can to get away from what God wants us to do. Like Pentecostal churches today, as our brother said, that many times, the, the, you know, it's not even mentioned Pentecost, isn't, isn't even mentioned because Pentecost today, even in a Pentecostal church, seems to be something that they want to do in the back room. In many churches today, there's no communion service. We're doing away with things, no altar calls, no, no healing, no, no this, no that, no, all these sort of things. And, and they're delivered uh, in some back room or, or done away with completely. I heard one pastor tell me that it took him 10 years to get communion out of his church. Because he didn't want to have the waste of time to have communion. And uh, he had a little table up the back that if you wanted to go up the back, you could have it up the back on your own. So these sort of things, and, and today we've got so many different thoughts about uh, healing. We've got different thoughts about tithing. 
We've got different thoughts about, uh, uh, about the rapture. We've got different thoughts about when Jesus is coming back, if he's, even if he is coming back. <laughs> the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Friend, can I, can I say this to you? Please, don't come to me and ask me my opinion. Don't go to Kendall and ask him for his opinion. Don't go to this one or that one and ask their opinion because that's all you will get is our opinion. Go to the author and the finisher of your faith. Go to God himself. Don't just look for somebody that's going to agree with you because there's too much of that going on today. We just find a bunch of people that agree with what I agree with. And so here we are. Now, friend, I want to tell you, it's time that we hear the voice of God ourselves. That we cry out, let God's word dwell in you richly. Amen. Fight, go to God. If you're game to go to God, <laughs> go to God. Amen. Let me say that. Go to God. Say, God, what do you think about healing? <laughs> What do you think about tithing? What do you think about communion? What do you think about the baptism of the Holy Spirit? What do you think about? What do you think about worship? What do you find out of him? How many people believe that he speak with, he'll speak with you? He will lead you, he will guide you, he will, he will do things. When I first got saved in a Methodist church that did not believe in water baptism, I read in the Good News for Modern Man, which most people said was a junky book, but God was still there. Amen. And I read in there about water baptism. I went up to my pastor that was minister. I said, sir, I want to get water baptized. He said, were you sprinkled as a baby? I said, I was. He said, that's all you need. I said, thank you, sir. God, silly me. But every time I, even when I looked at the Kellogg's Corn Flakes packet, it said, sprinkle with sugar, immerse in milk. <laughs> Doesn't matter where you go. God will speak to you. Amen. And, and, and friend, what I'm saying is go to God. Let God lead you. Let God guide you. Let, let, let not doctrines and philosophies. There are doctrines in the Bible. There's philosophies in the Bible that are very, very real. But I want to tell you there's a lot of false doctrines and a lot of false philosophies and a lot of false traditions that, are, that have infiltrated the church. The enemy comes to rob, to kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. And I believe that God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should dream. Has he not said it? Will he not bring it to pass? He will deliver us. He will set us free. He will reveal the truth to us. Reveal the truth. Come on, lift up your hands. <laughs> Lord, we might need a bit of truth around us here. Come on, help us, Lord. Help us. Help us find the truth. Because it's the truth that will make me free. It's the truth that will make me free. In Jesus' name, amen. The covenant, he's a covenant-keeping God. Can I say this again? When God cut covenant with man, he obligated himself to protect, to look after, to keep safe those people. I will be your God. I will be your shield. I'll be, I will fight for you. I will do a lot of good things. Amen. How many people believe that God is a God of truth? You know, Cutting a covenant is a, is, a, is a very interesting thing. And I'm, I know I'm going to tell a story here uh, that will change, that a lot of people know. But, but be, just before I say that, because of the covenant that God had with Abraham, God gave us Jesus Christ, a covenant. And God, Jesus, shed his blood. And covenant, you see, when we hear of covenant, we might get all thoughts and different things, but in the Bible, when God spoke about covenant, every Jew knew exactly what God was talking about. We may not understand it ourselves because we, if you haven't studied it, you won't realize what it really means. But what it really meant was that God was, was going to protect them and look after them and everything like that. There was, you know, Livingstone and Stanley went through Africa and they, they cut covenants with many, many tribes over there. It's an interesting thing that all the, uh, even the heathen tribes in Africa all had a blood covenant. There was something there that God put in humanity in the Garden of Eden when he took that, uh, that lamb and slew the lamb and covered Adam's sin with the lamb's skin 
and Eve uh, with that skin. There was something that happened way back there that went through time. There was something as, and I don't understand how all the nations came into being, and I'm not even going to try and go into that, but all I know is that they all carried a certain DNA with them that they knew about covenant. And even though they worship false gods and, and the children of Israel worship false gods, okay? And the false gods there got hold of them and they, they didn't know the truth. But when they found the truth, many of those tribes come to Christ. But they all had a blood covenant. And Stanley, when he went over there looking for Livingstone, and he went into this place and there was this tribe that was a very, very powerful tribe. And, and uh, the people around Livingstone feared for their lives. And uh, they could not get a breakthrough. But anyhow, they decided that they'd try to uh, make peace with this people and cut a covenant with him. And the chief there said, okay, I'll, we'll cut a covenant. And there was a lot of things that they went through with this covenant. But one of the things of the covenant was that you had to bring a gift. You had to bring a gift to that person that you cut the covenant with. And of course, the chief, when, when he sees Stanley had a, had a stomach ailment, and so he took a white goat with him, and he used to drink the, the, the goat's milk. Well, I'm milking the goat, sorry. <laughs> Automatic. Uh, he used to drink the, the milk, and um, that was the only thing that he could really help keep down. And of course, when it comes, to, Chief, what do you want from me? He says, I want your goat. And, it, and, and of course, Stanley said, oh, man, no, don't want, don't want to do that. But anyhow, eventually, he hands over his goat. And so now the chief gives him a gift, and the chief gave him a stick that had some copper wire wrapped around it. And when you look at the goat and you look at this stick with a bit of copper wire, you think, my goodness, I, I've got a bad deal here. I've got a bad deal. But you see, as they left that place, and as they went into the next area, and as this tr hostile tribe came out, and they were scared stiff, but as soon as the, the warriors saw this stick with a bit of copper wrapped around it, they understood that that came from that chief. And if they touched him, because they'd cut a covenant together, you touch him, you touch me. And if they killed that young man, if they would have killed Livingston, if they would have killed him, then that chief would have come through and wiped him out. So... Instead of coming to kill, they bowed and they worshipped. You know what? That, that covenant, as they, what they do is they, they also cut, I don't know what part, they cut part of their body and they mingle the blood together. They put some gunpowder in there as well that causes a wound to appear so it doesn't heal properly. So that you remember the covenant. They remember the covenant. And when they went in and they, the other uh, tribes saw the, 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 the blood covenant that they'd cut, you know that that opened the gospel to all those tribes because everybody had a blood covenant understanding. But then Livingston and Stanley, when they went in, they would tell the people, yes, but now there's a new covenant that's been cut with Jesus Christ. And many of those tribes, thousands and thousands of those tribes, th millions of people throughout Africa got born again because God had made a way. Amen. See, this, this is very, very real. It's very, very the significant God gave us an amazing covenant you see we God is obliged right now if I understand my position I don't I don't do it flippantly I don't demand I don't but God says remind me of my promises call unto me and I will answer thee I do it humbly. I, I, I bow before my God today with full respect and full honor and gratitude and, and, and that God would save a wretch like me. To sing that song, you know, that, that God would save a wretch like me. I can understand where that man was coming from. But it's through that humility, through that love that we cry out, Abba, Father, and we say, God, God, you've, you've made provision for me. You've done something so wonderful for me. And God, I'm so appreciated of it. The devil's tried to steal it from me. But today I'm standing on your promise, my God. I'm saying in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. I am delivered. I am saved. 
set free. Uh, my God, you have made a, a show of the enemy openly. God, you have broken the strongholds of the enemy over my life. Shame and unforgiveness and hurts and disappointments, they are washed away. They are defeated. They are broken. They are smashed in the name of Jesus. And I stand strong in my God today. I stand with a Savior who's risen, who's alive on this planet. Amen. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. Above Him, there's no other. Jesus is the way. What a great covenant He cut with us. He who knew no sin died for me. He cut a covenant, an amazing covenant. Friend, that's why today when we anoint you with oil, those people today that, that need prayer for healing, those people that need prayer for deliverance, whatever it might be, whatever it might be today, you need prayer. When you stand, if we're praying, you don't say, well, I really don't deserve this because no, I deserve everything that God has ever done, amen. I deserve it because God made me worthy to receive it. He's cleansed me, He's washed me, He's set me free. He's delivered me, He's, he's an amazing God. What an amazing God we serve. You see this promise, the promise. When they sinned against the covenant, they brought judgment upon themselves. Because of this covenant, God gave them Jesus the Christ, the Son of God. How amazing is that? The blessing that Christ brought through His death is a covenant. A new covenant that we Gentiles might receive by receiving the Lord Jesus as Lord and Savior. Amen. Isn't that amazing when we got saved? See, most, most, most of us didn't understand what we entered into. We didn't understand if... You know, if you've got a father that, that was a multi-millionaire and even though you might have been estranged from him... Uh, but now all of a sudden, you know, towards the end of what, I don't know, but he passes away and, and they draw you, bring you into the will. And, the, and as they come in, they say, you're the sole beneficiary of this will. And your father now has left you the, the cattle on a thousand hills. He's left you with a, with a heritage. He's left you with mansions. He's left you with multi-millions of dollars. But if you didn't understand, if you didn't know that what that represented, you'd just say, oh. But friend, today, when we, many of us, walked out the aisle and, and somebody came out and, and said a little prayer over us and we said, Jesus, would you come into my heart? Would you be my Lord? Would you be my Savior? We, we really didn't enter into, understand what we entered into. That's why the Bible says you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Friend, I entered into a covenant relationship with a God. I entered into a covenant relationship with Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And now He stands beside me. He backs me. He's with me all, every moment of the day. He said, I'll never ever leave you nor forsake you. When Jesus died and rose again, triumphant are His foes. What an amazing thing that is. What an amazing thing. The covenant that we, gent that, that we gentile, Gentiles might receive by the receiving of the Lord Jesus Christ. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. We've got a high priest right now that cries out, it is finished. It is finished, amen. It's finished. I don't know about you, but I, I, I'm only halfway through. Still in the old covenant. We haven't even got into the new covenant yet. <laughs> we'll go now on next week. Amen. We'll just keep moving in here. Understanding what's mine. If you understand what's yours, you can have it. Amen. You know, would you go in and buy a car and, and they said it's got automatic and it's got uh, air conditioning and it's got this and it's got jewels and it's got all these other things and then you go in and pick it up and you find out it's a manual and it doesn't have any collision and you'd spit the chips, wouldn't you? <laughs> But some of us were just, well, I don't deserve really the better one. That's really what I deserve. I don't deserve. No, because of Jesus Christ, how, God is, how good is our God? Amen. How great is our God? How great is our God? I want to sing that song about when his eyes are on us. Not the verses. They're good, but I get a bit mixed up with the verses. Come on, his, his eyes are on you. His eyes are on you. Those that are going to, we're going to pray for today that need the oil, just come. 
We're going to pray for you today.